Welcome back. We are here in the Express to uh, at least talk to Pom Pom, uh, figure out what this whole event thing is about. Cosmodicy. Um, depending on how long that takes, we will figure out what we're going to do. And hello, Fushuan. Or, uh, Fushuan. Ron May. What are you doing here? Hmm. Everyone's talking about this seawater magma flavored snack. It's oh. becoming all the rage on quite a few planets. Seawater magma? I've heard they extract seawater and combine it with magma from the mountains. That, that sounds terrible. Sea wa just water of the ocean and molten rock don't make a snack. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh god. The taste is pleasant, but I personally have a soft spot for pastries that showcase more organic flavors. I'm with you on this one, Ron May. Totally. Speaking of which, I heard it's become quite common to photograph these delicacies and upload them to social media. <laughs> of course. And that doing so can even earn you sample treats from different purveyors. Oh, wait. Come again? Well, are these going to be all other things like seawater mixed with magma? However, I must admit, I'm not really skilled in that area. Do you have any advice? Not really. But, uh... Just <laughs> strike a pose with a peace sign. Just place them in a sunny spot and snap a few pics. Uh, mm. With how popular Ron May is, I'm gonna say the Pete the peace sign. That pose would present difficulties for me. What? But thank you for the suggestion. Are you missing the fingers to make a peace sign, or you just don't want to lie that you are for peace? I wonder if you'd be interested in seawater magma flavored pastries. Is it just the flavor? Or is it actually seawater and magma? Uh, that changes it a little bit. I mean, it may or may not taste good. And seawater will get a nice saltiness. Oh, too much saltiness, in my opinion. Um, which I never thought I would say. I'm not really sure what magma tastes like, other than ouch. And maybe, like, sucking on a rock. What kind of rock, though? Hmm. Should you take a liking to them, I'll make sure to prepare more next time. These aren't going to be as good as your other snacks you've pre prepared for us, though, I imagine. All right. Uh, Pom Pom. I just need to directly talk to you, right? Oh, hey, the doctor is here, too. People who struggle with decisions are either overthinkers or lack thoughts altogether. Jeez, that's harsh. Which are you? Um. Uh, let me think. I think I'm an overthinker. So, you're part of the Genius Society. <laughs> if not, no. then, what is there to boast about? Nothing. I'm not boasting. I just overthink. What defines a fool is the inability to recognize their own shortcomings. Hmm. Don't let that be you. Yeah, that is an aspect of foolishness, I suppose. But what about you, Dr. Ratio? What are your own shortcomings? Or are you yourself a fool? Well. All right. Pom pom. Still, I'm back. Wait, hold on. This might be for a different quest. The sad pom pom quest. Uh, um, check the package. Okay, let's find this package. Okay, there it is. After noticing that you got close to a package, pom pom excitedly came over from somewhere else. I mean, it was just over there. Oh, hey there, Stell. What's the matter? Are you interested in this package? I bet you are. I am actually quite curious. <laughs> I'm all about conserving my body's finite life force, so I ain't curious. What's a Heron Express court courier package doing here? Is that what bird it is? A Heron. Don't Herons have really long beaks, though? Um, I, I, I can't lie. I actually am very curious. 
I figured you'd be. This is a gift from another nameless in the cosmos. Express has had received one before. There's ma there are many who walk on the path of Trailblaze. Even if you've never met them, they're good companions of Trailblaze. Really? Are they not at all associated with the Express, or do they just happen to follow Trailblaze? The storage room on the Express still holds plenty of gifts sent by many of the Nameless. Oh, can I see some of them? Oh, they're Nameless. That's right. Although Akavili is no longer with us, many Nameless continued to hold on to the will of Trailblaze. They stream across the cosmos to fulfill the creed of Trailblaze. You know, this actually brings an interesting question. Prior to Akavili's, I guess, death, did following the path of Trailblaze lead to the same kind of uh, powers that uh, following the other paths, the other uh, Aeons gives, like the hunt and destruction, etc.? Though I suppose that's not necessarily you following that path. But point is, did Akavili gaze on to others the way that those others do? Granting them power. And I don't know, maybe that even despite their non existence now, they that power lingers. Probably not. Some of them were once passengers on the express. Others have never boarded it. But I guarantee you that they're all interesting people. It'll be good if you can meet them one day. I'm, hey, I'm down. I always love meeting new people. But yeah, open it up quick. Cool your jets. We're opening it now. What is it? 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 You and Pom Pom open the package and discover a projection device in the style of a scroll. Oh, that's cool. Hey, this must be Conductor Pom Pom of the Express. It has been a while. And this is? Oh, you're actually there. I'm Stell. I'm the Galactic Baseballer. <laughs> what an ugly New Year's card. I want to return it. Nah, that's too mean. I'm the Galactic Baseballer. Does being the Galactic Baseballer mean you're really famous? Sorry, I'm not part of your generation. Well, I'm not that famous yet, but damn it, I'm gonna be f super famous when I knock the destruction's head off of his shoulders with my amazing bat. This is Stell, a new member of the Express crew. I'm Meg, a former nameless. Former? You no longer follow the path of Trailblaze? I bid you the latest greetings from the distant cosmic past. Oh. So you're not alive anymore? This is sort of a very smart recording. A pleasure to meet you, Stell. Looks like you are a nameless that was chosen by the conductor of the Express. Hmm. Pom Pom, is there something you're hiding? I expected a gift, but it looks like another job. This is both the gift and the duty of Trailblaze. Looks like the conductor hasn't told you what you're supposed to do. Well, ask away. I'll answer your questions. Um, okay, who are you, Meg, former Nameless? Yes, if we're talking about Amber Eras, I should be from AE2150, I believe. I actually don't know what current era it is, or what year. It's several, several Amber Eras away. I've been dead for a long time, so that's why I say I'm a former Nameless. I think I'm right, aren't I? How? So who am I talking to? I'm Meg's trailblazing will. Okay, that's really cool. But somehow in the form of a hologram. I bet you've probably talked with someone like a resonance or a mimetic entity before. That's pretty much what I am. I think we have the whole mimetic entity. That was like the big old ghost thing in uh, Herta Space Station, I think. 
Let's talk about me later, okay? Let's talk about me later, okay? Yeah, can I ask you what it's, uh... What's in it for me? Whatever this is. That face you're making reminds me of some old friends. They were reluctant to work for no pay, too. Yeah. As part of the crew, have you ever been somewhere bitingly cold or blazingly hot? Certainly bitingly cold. Yes. Specifically, Urelo 6. I've heard of Urelo 6, but isn't it supposed to be quite a hospitable planet, no? I mean, thousands of years ago, yes. Hasn't been for a long time, though. It has become a world blanketed in snow. We could offer an insignificant blessing for the trailblaze. We... What? I... Mm, I don't want something insignificant, though. We can give the Nameless just a bit of warmth in the winter wind, or a cool breeze in places of excruciating heat. All right. Okay. So there is a little bit of trailblaze power left. Even on a smooth ride, the nameless can gain and use almost imperceptible some can gain and use some almost imperceptible luck. That is the benefit that I can bring to you and up and the other nameless. I see. And if I refuse, Looking into your eyes, I can see the incredible nameless throughout history. I think you'll accept my offer for sure. Hmm. I mean, if you're offering good rewards, you're probably correct. Can you be specific about what this is, though? In my time, the cancer of all worlds was spreading elsewhere or everywhere. The destruction, okay. The silver rail was blocked, and extreme climate alterations raged to no end. Trailblaze has never been an easy task, and after the fall of the Aeon Akavili, that was more true than ever. Right. To complete our shared goal of Trailblaze, the nameless on different worlds all rose up. Some continued to go out and explore unknown quadrants, and others shared the story of the nameless throughout, throughout, uh, through songs. Everything they did was to make Trailblaze a little stronger. This is sort of on the uh, rules of, uh, like, almost like D&D gods, where they need followers, people to believe in them, in order to gain power. The way I help is by collecting the trailblazing experiences of the Nameless. As for specifics, well, the explanation can get a little abstract. I think, it, you, I think if you try it out for yourself, you'll get it. Okay. This power of the graced voyager is sealed with me. It collects trailblaze experiences from the nameless, collects the luck accrued in their adventures, and offers blessings for the journey of the journeys of distant nameless. Now, please close your eyes. Hmm. What are you gonna do to me? I'll mimic the memoria extraction process used by the Garden of Reco Recollection. Oh, I'm actually from, uh, familiar with that. And construct a familiar trailblazing experience using situations and companions you're familiar with. I use a kinder and gentler approach. Thank you. You'll experience the process of exploring, understanding, creating, connecting once again here. Everything you've experienced will help support trailblaze. Hmm. Welcome to Cosmodicy. Here you can turn your Trailblaze experiences into blessings. With some fun music. Praise be to Trailblazers. All the Trailblaze, all the nameless, all the nameless invited from all across the cosmos will support you in completing this great feat. Trailblaze experiences. Sounds a bit abstract, no? Don't worry, this is effectively your currency in Cosmodicy, Trailblaze Funds. Okay. Our goal is to offer these Trailblaze Funds to Pom Pom. Hmm. The more funds, Trailblaze Funds you contribute, the greater your reward. I do like the looks of all those. 
Now, let's talk about how to earn Trailblaze funds. Yes, please. Oh, this looks fun. In Cosmodicy, you need to roll dice to advance on the map. Trailblazers can obtain Trailblaze funds through a variety of game modes. Ah, oh, a board game. Is this like the game of life or Monopoly or Shoots and Ladders or something else? Trailblazers can contribute their Trailblaze funds to Pom Pom. The more funds they contribute, the more personal rewards they unlock. Yeah, there's also that percentage thing there. True contributions from all Trailblazers will gradually unlock cosmic contribution rewards. Oh, so this is collaborative with all Trailblazers everywhere, or? I'm a little stealth. Love it. I will use scenes and companions you're familiar with to create the map upon which you adventure. Whoa! This can definitely draw out some trailblazing experiences from passenger still. Sorry, I was thinking about trash cans. Yes! Always. Constantly thinking about trash cans. We're here at Herta Space Station. Doesn't this bring back a lot, lots of memories? Yeah. Moving requires gets, uh, you to consume dice. Let's try using these first. A three. Ooh, a game. Oh, is this more like uh, Mario Party? Oh, you're finally on the game tile. It's a windfall slot machine. Okay, so it's just slots. Some gambling. You can uh, get Trailblaze funds if you get the designated image. Come on, come try your luck, passenger still. Nice. That is probably uh, a set in stone outcome this time, though. Excellent. Do I just keep doing that? How many dice do I get? Oh, a five. Another three. This is the encounter tile. There are always choices you have to make while trailblazing. Don't make any choices that you'll regret later, passenger still. You recognize the person before you. She introduces herself as Sheila Nova, guide of the Herta Department of Galactic Geopolitics. You feel you don't actually know her. Her smile is forced, cold but fitting. She doesn't have a smile. That's the most blank stare she could possibly give me. Um, she suddenly asks, is it possible to make an android into a real human with a rich enough script? Hmm. Android into a real human with a rich enough script. No. I'm gonna say no. After you make your choice, it's all about it's all in the hands of luck. Oh. I guess I failed. Sheila falls into endless thought. <laughs> Uh, Pom Pom thinks that might not be a good outcome. Feels like uh, falling into a logic trap or like the system crashing. So I can try again? No problem, though. I'll try this reroll coin. I'll let you try again. Nice. Gun wishes to speak to us. A nice outcome this time, all right. Um... He has to, he has let go of what he should have let go of many years before. Yeah, even an indistinguishable falsehood cannot become true. Very cool. Two, and I'm rolling poorly. It's a land tile. This time, uh, it's a land tile this time, basically, it's just buying a plot of land, you know? So it is Monopoly. Yep, I'll let you keep earning trail. It'll let you keep earning Trailblaze funds. It's a great deal, so make your purchase now. Okay.
Which road should we pick? I mean, I don't know what that is, but it looks cool. When you run into a fork, you can choose to proceed down different paths. There are also lucky bubbles here. Pom Pom will pick this side for first. What did that do? Oh, another slot. But this one is a set of three. Another windfall slot machine. The rules seem a bit different this time. Uh, three identical images. You'll pay four times the reward. Okay, but we'll still get this for each one. I think. I got a feeling that the lucky bubbles you just picked up will increase your trailblaze funds this time. Nice. Awesome. Buffs can increase the trailblaze funds you can obtain. Look here. So how long does that last, I wonder? It's a golden encounter tile. If some is something good about to happen? I roll a one, yeah. Hey, Asta! Your impression of Asta can't escape the stereotype of a rich lady anymore these days. I don't care. Asta's awesome. I love Asta. But she's obviously just a youthful and sometimes quick-tempered lead researcher. Is she? I don't think I've ever seen her with any sort of temper. I am not... Hmm, I am forgetting something. But yeah, she's never struck me as quick-tempered. She has struck me as the exact opposite, in fact. She's invited you to observe the stars tonight, and you arrive at the appointed place, only to set eyes upon her newly purchased, mega-luxurious and obscenely expensive telescope. <laughs> Please tell me that's the real name of the telescope that it was sold as. Who wouldn't be overwhelmed by this feeling of, am I worthy to stand next to her? Well, the obvious answer there is no. I think Peppy's the only one who's actually worthy. Touch the expensive telescope first. Well, let's eagerly observe the starry sky. Since ancient times, people have always been interested in the layout of the stars. Nice! Asta teaches you the secrets of the stars by speaking in your ear. Oh my. It's like the stars themselves are talking to you. Hmm. I wish I could see this. Nice. The dice are all used up now. It's uh used up. Now it's time to contribute trailblaze funds. Passenger Stell's contributions are shooting up. That's impressive. Nice. Contribution comes reward. Remember to claim your rewards. Nice. Let's continue our journey. Okay, the dice refresh every so often, I see. But I don't have any more dice, do I? Oh. Startup capital, ordinary dice, and remote dice. The, uh, so I get to keep the land tile. I like that. Oh, it, it seems you got some remote dice. So I can select what I want to get. Use the remote dice to freely select how many steps you want to move. Try it out. There's something nice coming up. Is it that? Oh, yeah. Fashion Squad. The fashion show is about to start. Where are your designer and designers and models? Assignment duration, five turns. Assigning numbers, three persons. Please select the uh, most appropriate assignee. Who is the best person to be a costume designer? I mean, obviously Kafka. No, I don't want to reconsider. Ching Chua is too lazy. Luka, I don't know enough about. Who's the best person to make costumes by hand? Um, 
probably Dr. Ratio or Himiko. I don't know enough about Himiko's abilities. I'm gonna go with Dr. Ratio. Who's the best person to be a costume model? Ooh. Um. I don't know who you are, uh, uh, Aventurine. But you look much more modely to me than Stell. Alright, the assignment will be completed in five turns. I guess five rolls of the dice. Sele uh, select here to get an overview of the map. Oh, hey, cool. Break down the uh, paths. Oh, wow. It's a big circle. It is a game board, I guess. It's sort of a combination of Monopoly with the buying of tiles, the uh, Mario Party with all the mini games. Actually, it's, it's mostly Mario Party, which I appreciate. That's a fun game. 48 lands to own, 60 encounters to uh, find. All right, let's, uh, I mean, what is that? I want, I guess I'll get the bubble no matter what. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Oh, wow. Uh, I was thinking about using my uh, remote dice for that, but it was far enough away that I was willing to try a regular dice first. You know Herta is super busy, but each time you meet, she always reminds you to test out the simulated universe if you're not busy. Yeah, she really does. But now, the Herta puppet before you is full of joy, warmly holding your hand and saying, Your charisma is just so breathtaking. It is simply my honor to greet you. Who are you? And what have you done with Herta? Back, imposter. Well, what in the world is going on? In any case, better give her a good swing with your bat first. <laughs> yes. The Herta puppet stops the bat with one hand. Uh, don't move. This is uh, just a language model test. Who is this demon? How dare you impersonate Herta? Knock out, knock out the Xeno Hydro. You broke the puppet. I think we'll stick with this. That's fine. game. After flipping over a cookie with the bomb image, final rewards will be calculated based on the flip images. I have no clue what I was just doing there. I don't think I quite understood the rules. I thought it was a matching game where they were going to flip back over, but apparently not. The end! Trailblaze Affinity. You're, you've arrived at the end point. Please fill in the Trailblaze Affinity test. The test will let you see which Trail Astral Express navigator from history you are most like. Congratulations on reaching the endpoint. To further your Trailblaze expedition, I would like to invite you to participate in the following Trailblaze affinity test. Please answer based on your instincts. After you complete a few surveys, it will generate a nameless report and notify you about which historical Astral Express navigator you are most similar to. When the time comes, I will also prepare your due rewards as well. Meg. Hmm. So a personality test? There's a new ghost story floating about in the space station. Unknowingly, you will also you also accepted a mission from Adler. Don't know who that is. 
when faced with a mission that doesn't pique your interest, but must be completed nonetheless. What will you do? I mean, keep calm and carry on with the mission. It's just what you do what you gotta do. Oh wow, trailblazers work in mysterious ways. You've learned some fresh gossip about the space station from Richard Know-It-All. <laughs> I think I've seen, uh, yeah, Richard Know-It-All a few times in group chats. And it's related to lead researcher Asta. Of course it is. It always is. He asks you not to tell anyone, but you think you can't get a peep out of me. There's a price for secrets. Especially when it's from Richard Know-It-All. prices are transparent and fair. For betraying friends, though, I charge extra. You and Arlen are having a dis disagreement on which route to walk Peppy. What should you guys do? Yeah, can't we ask Peppy? Peppy's very smart. Peppy shakes its head, disappointed in the both of you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peppy. You already know that uh, even geniuses will fight among themselves. Or it can be said that they don't see the differ the direction the moon is going. How do you how are you going to solve the situation? What? Geniuses arguing fighting amongst themselves? Um I wanna see the rivers run blood. Well uh, the rivers run red. But no. If getting barbecue is an option, that is always the choice. It is. Oh, so good. Yeah. Something can't be solved with a one meal. Just eat two meals. Make it three. Or four or five. There's no such thing as too much barbecue. It doesn't exist. Current test progress. Four out of 50. I guess there'll be another 46 questions. Passenger stills choices have been recorded. Thank you for filling in the survey. Continue onward. Complete the trailblaze bit to do. Yes, of course. I guess that will be, uh, will tell me at the very end. Um, I think I managed to hit uh, all the uh, most cho chosen uh, options. Me. Choices you make will be recorded right here, passenger still. Ah, I see. We get all 50, then we unlock another 60, Stellar Jade. Nice! This will all help me get uh, my wonderful uh, Asheron. Oh. oh, we're on Eurelo 6 now. Reaching a new area seems to have changed the buffs. Go, take a look. Seems like your buffs will keep growing as uh, long as you re can keep reaching new areas. Uh, that was 150% before. It didn't increase, it decreased. That one might have been temporarily effective, though, so... Yeah, okay, fair enough. I have a reward? Oh, nice. What is that? Starfire Essence, okay. An essential material for a light cone. Oh, for nihility too. I wonder if there's gonna be a weapon that those are especially for. I don't think I've seen them before. So are we on our own now, or? And did we ever uh, complete that assignment? Two turns, okay. Is that a six? Board encounter. Oh, Pela. And some kid. Pela's long awaited Tale of the Winterlands fan work publication has finally arrived. Um, it's limited edition and not available for pre order. Just as she's in the queue to buy her copy, a squad of Silverman guards with anxious expressions approach her. I.e., work has arrived at her doorstep. Don't. You. Dare. 
Now she is staring at you with imploring eyes. You can't just stand by and do nothing. Um. I, yeah, I gotta. This is... I'll, I'll, I'll stand in line for you, don't worry. Alright, Pela didn't mean it that way, but there's no other choice now. Um... If I retry and I get something lower, will I get the higher one? Bought three copies. Lucky Street, 50%. Nice. They are for reading, collecting, and preaching. Mistake. Oh no. If there's one to blame, it'd be those who let you cut in line. Only Petite Delight, 20%. There we go. 100%. Bought the uh, limited edition signed copy. Kayla is ecstatic and treats you to a feast. All right, I want that one. What do we get? Four reroll coins, one remote dice. That would be kind of counterproductive since I used the remote dice to get here. Um, sliced cake stargazer gain the following buff after purchase. When, uh, oh, this one costs money. When obtaining Trailblaze funds, receive an extra 400% for one turn. I'm honestly not sure if that'll pay for itself. I think I'll just take the rerolls. the assignment. In a spark of inspiration, Kafka designed a set of clothing. Dr. Ratio took the measurements and tailored it for Adventurine to wear. Click, click. Adventurine started on the runway and received applause from the entire room. Nice. Is he, uh, is that 200,000? Fantastic. We're doing well. What way is that? What way should I go? buff is that or lucky bubble or six uh two three four five six two three four five six uh let's just go this way i want to see what the dollars do oh it's just money fair enough really ever winter monument oh yeah thousand every time a die is cast it takes just three to pay off another six great you can now add stakes they're just getting me to gamble we spent extra trailblaze funds to add stakes will that re multiply the rewards that's right try your luck now Hold on, though. Let me see the rules of this again. So after doing three identical images. But last time I did, uh, I eventually got a bomb or whatever. <laughs> cookie bingo. Gameplay modes for cookie bakery. Look there over the preferred cookies in the cookie bakery. Well, I don't know what the difference between all the cookies, but I don't know if I have a preferred. I think that this was a bomb because I picked the worst three. Only one uh, multiplier. Fair enough. All right. Oh no. Two. Yes. Nice.
can I turn around? No, no. Oh, and never mind. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four. Where's this one though? Oh, an assignment. Zila! That brawl happy Zila suddenly seeks you out in hopes of teaching her how to dance in a duet. <gasps> Ooh, is this the dance of Brania? <laughs> I see what's happening, Zila. Um, you adroitly uh, notice that this has to do with that Silvermane Guard officer social meet. For the sake of your own health, it's best not to reveal that. Then again, Zila's dancing lessons have never gone as well as you imagined. I have to think of a way to teach her. Hmm. Help her clear her mind first, or try to use your hands to correct movement. Let's get, clear her mind, get her calm. Uh. Dancing is dancing. All its nuances. Think of dance as martial arts. Zila is enlightened. Both of you need to clear some clear your thoughts. Finally come to a conclusion. Ah, uh, that's good enough. 880,000? Or well, that was 88,000, maybe. Oh, nice. Come on, too. Damn it. Oh. Another place to buy. Or another shop. Just one without rare items. Um. Potato fries Sunday. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh, well, that. that Mm, no, no, I don't like that at all. I'm sure someone will, but eh, this is not for me. Gains the following buff after purchase when obtaining Trailblaze funds, receive an extra 25%, lasting for four turns. Eh, that could be well worth it, though. Rejuvenation pellets. Uh, receive an extra 50% for four turns. And Moat Dice. Oh, I'm gonna go through rejuvenation pellets. Oh yeah, still was here on the Yuri Six Overlook. Come on, all oh, good. That'll pay off nicely. sir. You are fed up with helping Wallace make friends. Fed up with helping Reagan solve the Ministry of Education's quizzes. Fed up with investigating Tamilla's daily routine. Helping Alina pick up balls of paper. Is there... I'm guessing these are some of the other daily quests that I've long since neglected because of my utter hatred for a certain somebody. Um... Is there a permanent way to get them to learn to solve their own problems? It's just a way to help one another. Not a bad idea. But we want the Trailblaze funds to take advantage of our perks. There's no, there's such a, this is such a simple question. Just use your hands, no? thousand get a nice bonus but these of helping someone out come to an end nice oh we're at the end another personality quiz your friend oh Sampo 
has been arrested by the Silverman guards. Sampo, I am so disappointed in you for getting caught. You're supposed to be better than that. But this time, you're perfectly sure he was framed. Framed by who? By Sampo himself? The Silvermane guards have the wrong person. It's up to you to help him. Um, make an immediate appeal. Maybe appeal. Maybe they'll slap him with a heavier sentence. Uh. Uh. I. Mm, I, I. I love him. But this is too much. This is too great. He would. Sampo himself would appreciate this most of all. I think. Sampo, thanks you gratefully. <laughs> um, you have been requested by Japard to deliver the emergency military supplies to the garrison squad at the Snow Plains before sundown. But along the way, you run into a smuggler band on the verge of death. They need someone to help them return to the city. Ah, very well, save the smugglers. Silver main guards will understand the situation. A mine occupied by vagrants has dis was discovered during the Underworld's land development. Oh, okay. Wildfire knows that they have impeded development progress in the surrounding towns, but also understands that vagrants have rights too. All you do. Well. Both sides to negotiate for your sake. Um, bandits. I'm the only bandit around here. <laughs> um, yeah, let's ask both sides to negotiate. So, this is the brimming confidence of a fake, uh, face face fruit user. And <laughs> it's a One Piece reference. That's amazing. Fight Club's proprietor, Scott, says that he hopes you will join the boxing tournament to beat up a scrawny contender. It's all voluntary too, so you don't have to be all morally torn about it. He guarantees that you'll make a killing. Hopefully not literally. You will. All right, let's fight. You're also after the cash anyway. Putting in effort for cash, that's not a moral at all. Like I said, it's a voluntary tournament. Excellent. It comes to mind that there aren't enough worlds with how many tests there apparently are, so I imagine we'll go around multiple times. Ah, we're in, uh... Sienjo, Luafu. Yeah, Sienjo, Luafu. Uh, Panacone. And then, I guess that's the last one, actually. That's probably the new area that had the T-Rex that we fought. One. Nice drawing. During her mission, Madame Shui bumped into a mysterious organization. They hid a treasure chest in the Hexanexus. Oh, they placed it by the roadside, quietly slipping away when no one was looking. Is this group of people up to no good? Or is it just a misunderstanding? Shui Yi hopes to hear what you think. Well, this is the Hex Club. There's no need to be nervous. Yeah. Shui doesn't seem to be able to grasp why the Hexanexus was promoted via these methods. Yeah, they're impossible to understand. Shui begins to understand the Hexanexus. It is a rather interesting experience to indulge during my period of reanimation. Reanimation? Yes, this is the Luafu. Oh, nice. I get 6,000 from that. Three lands. Almost the end. They ain't one again. Yes, please. Earthrise Agora. Uh, 
<laughs> again. Oh yeah, the cloud forward cargo lane, sure. What if I do? There we go. Excellent contribution. I'll take you, you, and you. Oh, is this a weapon? Yeah, it caused modesty. After obtaining the phone wallpapers, they can be changed in the phone function. Oh, never mind. It's a wallpaper. Trial Blaze will not end. Let's head toward the shimmering stars together. How many are there? Total. Um, what is that? Ah, an avatar obtainable by completing the Cosmodesty event. Little pom-pom. I like the pom-pom with the crown looking attachment to it, uh, it their uh, hat. A coin or a stopwatch? I can't actually quite tell. Oh yeah, holding a commemorative gold medal. I'm feeling a little Wreck-It Ralph in here. Looks like there's just under 2,000 total stellar jade to get from this. Well, that was fun. I enjoyed that little distraction. Meg, I will be back at a later date. Now, we do have some more phone calls. Or text messages, rather. Come be my buddy, of course, Chingchua. Though I should probably go in order. Go ahead and work. Just don't interrupt my game. Oh, right. I want to ask for a favor. Sure. I went to listen to Mr. Xion's storytelling after work, but he stopped at a cliffhanger. I can't take it! Oh, I hate that so much. Both love and hate cliffhangers. He's resuming tomorrow, but, n but at an earlier time. I don't know if I'll be able to get there soon enough after work. Oh, no. That's a problem. If I can't make it, can you go and listen in my stead? Absolutely. But I don't have the context for the first part. Sure. But I haven't heard the story today. Should I be able to understand anything tomorrow? Oh, the story today is about the Cloud Strider. And apparently they have a train. Oh. Okay. The train is like the Sienjo ships and can travel between worlds. I... Huh. Do they now? I wonder, this is what what is this fantastical concept of a train that travels between worlds? Why does that sound so familiar? Right? That's why I'm asking for a favor. Mr. Xian said the Cloud Strider also uh, once arrived at a planet called Horilo. Ah, Horilo 6 but was sucked into a huge conspiracy and even battled a massive, uh, Arumaton. Automaton? Don't spoil whatever happens next to me. Just tell me what Mr. Xion's version is tomorrow. Where is Harilo? So you don't know? All right, looks like I still have to be there in person tomorrow to get the story. I'll tell you my story next time. Maybe it'll be even more exciting. I mean, I fought a being of destruction with a giant robot after all, after being gazed upon by the Amber Lord. Jing Yuan. I'm not at the seat of Divine Force. I, yeah, I... I don't think I've ever actually seen you there, except for in that one cutscene where the sound cut out. Still, I finished reading the files you shared with me from the databank. Uh, what files did I share with you? After sitting in the seat of divine foresight for so long, I can't help but overlook the world outside of Luafu's delves. That, combined with the long lifespan of the Sienjo humans made me feel that the entire world is as boring and changeless as myself. However, now I've read the wondrous encounters of the Express Crew. Or now, 
Okay, no. Uh, I realize, now that I've read the wondrous encounters of the Express Crew, I realize that using my endless lifespan to travel various worlds would be a fun venture indeed. It would. Good use of your uh, long life. Unfortunately, I still shoulder Luafu's countless duties and cannot accompany your group. But if I were to retire one day, what should I do? You can... I can't even imagine you retiring. Come on, Nameless. Take Fushuan's job. Um, yes. Perhaps you can swap places with Fushuan and be the Master Diviner. <laughs> Don't ever mention that to me again. Master Diviner is an exceedingly busy job. No ordinary person can face its arduous work. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be a demotion rather than a promotion. That reminds me. My dream as a young boy was to become a galaxy ranger. <gasps> oh! Like a Power Ranger? But the, uh... The either Power Rangers in space or Power Rangers... Was it Galaxy Quest? Um... Whatever. The, the one that was in a distant galaxy. Reminds me of that. Pity that life never goes the way you want it to go. If given the chance... Where would you want to go? Perhaps I'll go seek out animals that have already gone extinct in Sienjo. There's a good idea. Let us stop for today. Chingzu just carried in another pile of documents for me. Just looking at them gives me a headache. I'm so sorry. However, this does mean that your tagline here is in fact a lie. You does sound like you were at the, site, the seat of divine foresight. You're working hard, General. I'm sorry if I can't be of help. It's enough for me to squeeze out some time to chat with you, Stell. All in all, I shall return to work. Farewell. Good talking to you, Jing Yuan, General. Oh, you Kong. What's up? I wish to take this to take to the skies once more. Hmm. I don't know why that makes me think of Firefly. I haven't been here for so long. Untouched places are few and far between on the Luafu. Pixar didn't happen. But where are you? I'm on top of the Jade Gate. Uh, you can get on the Jade Gate? Of course. I did that a lot when I was young. Wow. I finally got yesterday's workload done, so I'm taking a break. I was going to send you a photo, but the signal's acting funny. Even text messages are coming in slower than usual. Hmm. Interesting. I guess it's just an area of bad reception. Fair enough. Well, next time I'll check it out myself. I want to see with my own eyes. Big sigh. Just when I thought nothing will go wrong, I'm leaving. What, what, what happened? What's the matter? A Psy Crane. Oh, right. The, the delivery things, yeah. A Psy Crane delivered an official document, and an emergency meeting is coming up. I gotta go back to the commission. Those wicked Psy Cranes. Always ruining everything. Not like mushrooms. Mushrooms are just great. You can never, you can run from signals, but never cycranes. Why are cycranes so dastardly efficient? After all, Heron Express, we ship whatever you want. Oh, the Heron Express. Tee <laughs> hee. Ship. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what is stealth? Uh, I know this is an attempt at childish humor, but... Ship? <laughs> I don't get it. Chingchua. You have... Uh, hey, have you registered for the new Immersia that just came out? Come be my buddy. Immersia? 
I mean, I'll be your buddy. I love you, but you're you're fun. Oh, it's just a Foxine sympathetic immersia called Viridian Soul. Specifically for playing Celestial Jade, so we call them buddies. Oh. As long as you have a Jade Abacus, you can join in too. It's very easy. I don't have a Jade Abacus. I have a phone. Basically a mobile game. Is it cross-platform? Oh, got it. Basically a mobile game. It's a mobile game. I don't understand. Anyway, I've already registered. It's free. Now I can play it at work. <laughs> you coming? I'll open up a friend room for us. I don't know how to play, though. I'd like to. But I don't know how to play Celestial Jade. You still haven't taught me. Oh, it's easy. Come over to the games parlor when you have the time. Go pick it up in no time. Really? Really, really? I'm not lying. You don't want to just kick my butt? The number of people on the Express, it should be easy to find enough players. You can teach everyone after learning it. Then you'll be able to play together. I'll send you the invite in a bit. Thank you, Chingtra. I do want to learn how to play Celestial Jade. Excellent. All right. So our plan going forward is, well, obviously we're going to continue doing this, but I'm going to first make a detour to say hi to Clara, and then we will continue on with the uh, Trailblaze mission. And, you know, whenever we hit a sort of, I guess, we'll call it a checkpoint, Kind of like what we just did. Um, we'll uh, maybe take care of a side task that is that we want to get, you know, handle, you know, such as these character quests. But yes, first up though is Claire because I can't keep her waiting in any any longer in good conscience. In good conscience. There she is. Uh -huh. Oh, if you want to be friends with Clara, go and say hi. She would love you, I'm sure. When would she have time? She is pretty, pretty busy being the best. Oh, before we go say hi to her, actually, um, I want to take care of some more wishes here. To hopefully get Asheron. That's not a five star. We did get a march. Squeezing poor pom pom. Um, they wanted my new life. I think we have some of those already. Nope. But we did get our two more of them. Nice. Holy cow, buddy. That three of you in one go. Wow. One banner. Shoot. And well, what do your uh, Eidolons do? Salty Dog. Enter in battle, Gallagher regenerates 20 energy and increases effect resistance by 50%. Nice. I assume just his own effect resistance, but still. That, uh, actually, yeah, because something of his scales off of his effect resistance, I think. Careful. Don't get too lost in those sweet dreams. Hmm. Like his uh, voice. Lion's tail. When using the skill, removes one debuff from the target ally. At the same time, increases their effect resistance by 30%, lasting for two turns. Right, that's a good one. Careful. Don't get too lost in those sweet dreams. This is one that's really good, though. It's four. And then six is really good, too. Actually, no, he doesn't have anything that scales off of effect resistance. I might be just thinking of uh, something that Asheron had. Where uh, it wasn't effect resistance, but something of her scaled off of a a not tip a non-typical stat. Clara Svarog. Sorry, Mr. Svarog. 
Perkins, or you, no, that wasn't Perkins. Pascal, very like Clara. Aw. <laughs> Good boy, Pascal. Aw, I missed her. He's so precious. Based on the information gathered, it is recommended that Pascal's data be formatted and integrated into the base network so that he doesn't threaten the property or safety of the camp's residents. Probably a good idea, Mr. Sprog. I know this is the most sensible option, but Pascal... What's wrong? How are the repairs going, Clara? Welcome, outsider. Thanks to Clara's hard work, the repairs were completed successfully. Wonderful. I knew you could do it, though. <laughs> yes. The little fella is alive and well again. It's just that some parts aren't completely back to normal yet. No? So Pascal is a name? What about Pascal isn't normal exactly? Well, so Pascal, is that his name? Yes. Mr. Sparg and I spent a long time coming up with a suitable oh, name. Oh, it is so precious. Does Mr. Sparg always help you come up with names for, like, Mr. Perkins? And uh, I forget some of the others. It's been too long, but... You, Pascal, good. I am called Name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is a good name, Pascal. Oh, look. Pascal is greeting you. It's just, his speech is still a little confusing. That's okay. I can understand it well enough. The examination conducted earlier revealed that the information stored in this robot's core module is incompatible with the new hardware. Right, didn't we? We discovered that last time, I think. Furthermore, many defective networks were detected in the core module. A significant amount of muddled information with unknown content was discovered during a deep scan. Modeled information with unknown content. Hmm. Doesn't sound good. Simply put, Pascal's brain is filled with junk information of unknown origin. This junk, along with hardware that's incompatible with his core, caused him to lose his ability to communicate. Aw, poor Pascal. Fortunately, apart from the language module, Pascal is still functioning properly. That's good, though. Well, so there's nothing truly... He's functional. However, the robot still has a 44.7% oh. chance of malfunctioning. That's less it's than ideal. It's recommended that Pascal's data be formatted and integrated into the base network. Wouldn't want uh, Pascal to malfunction. That'd be too sad. Mr. Sparog, I understand, but... I think Pascal is different. Yeah? He possesses a quality that other small robots don't have. What is that, Clara? In some ways, I believe he's similar to Mr. Sparog. Oh. I can't overlook this unique quality. Oh, wow. Mr. Sparog, could you give me a little more time? I want to investigate this further. If we don't find anything, you can integrate Pascal into the network. Fair enough, Clara. You kind of like Mr. Sparrow. That's very surprising. Understood, Clara. I respect your wish. In the meantime, I'll make sure that this robot doesn't endanger other people or property. Well, that sounds like a good compromise. Um, so what should we do now? I'd like to recap what I discussed with Mr. Sparrow earlier. That's good for me. Let's begin by doing exactly what we did before. Find a new shell, put Pascal's core in it, and see if the hardware is compatible. Ah, okay. Yeah. According to the analysis, Pascal's original hardware was a direwolf or grizzly model. If we can put its core into the appropriate I don't know which shell, models those are. there's an 87.3% chance that its language module will return to normal. And it will have less, uh, you know, a decreased chance of malfunctioning. There are all kinds of abandoned robots in the machine graveyard. Let's go take a look. Mm. After you, Clara. Oh, I can't talk to you. Hello, Pascal. Yeah, I don't know the this dire wolf or grizzly model. I, like, I don't know what those ones are called or the fists. Etc. I call those other ones the traffic lights. Hello, Mr. Perkins. It's 
the same old place. Yeah? Everywhere you look, there are robots that have lost the ability to function. Aw. I'm sorry, Clara. I know how much they mean to you. Hey, big sister, take a look over there. Oh, yeah. Big chainsaw. That, uh, is that one of the, is that like the grizzly model or something? I should actually probably get out my uh, electro party. <laughs> More enemies. Oh well. Time for a bug. <laughs> Let me tend your wounds. It's not like they're that strong. <laughs> Tedious. Yeah, they can barely I hurt will us. dispatch you. The fight is set. <laughs> Do not concern yourself with the out. What are this you? This is an automaton direwolf. Ah, direwolf model. It appears to have been modified. It's most likely another abandoned robot pet. Wasn't this wasn't here last time though, right? Because we came through here, I think, when we were helping or looking for a uh, body for for um. Well, I'm so sorry, Claire. I'm forgetting its name already. Although it doesn't seem to be functioning, you should still be cautious when approaching it. Of course. Uh-oh. That's not good. Intruder detected. Eliminate. Eliminate. Oh, hey, it's like, uh... <laughs> eliminate, eliminate. That's uh, reminds me of uh, Doctor Who. Oh no, it's still active. Watch out! Don't worry, Clara. We got this. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem. Fella is completely out of control. Let's quiet him down. Will do, Clara. Try not to damage him too much. A blade knows no more. Your end approaches. Too little. That was a mistake. I failed to send you. them uh, you okay Clara here it is oh, okay. this is the core I'll pack it up and take it with us don't we want the body too though hmm then all that's left is to drag the shelf back okay yeah leave it to me you should take a break it's okay I'm strong too <laughs> I'll tuck the corn a little tighter so it doesn't fall out. Oh yes, you're you're very strong. You're taking its core too. Judging from how active the robot was, its core isn't just scrap metal. It should be repairable. Right, but that we aren't planning on giving the shell to uh, the other robot. I can't let any robot go to waste if it can be repaired. So I'm going to try to fix them all. Aw, you I love your just your kindness, Clara. Yeah, that was a Pascal. So, should we fix Pascal or this one first? Let's start with Pascal. We found him first, after all. Yeah. Also, like Mr. Svarok warned, if he's not supervised, he might cause trouble. Right. You know, I have a large safe full of core modules that I've gathered around the underworld. Really? Every day, I try to figure out how to repair some of them and return the robots to normal. Except... There are a lot more than Mr. Sparg and I can handle on our own. Yeah. There's always a limit, like, because you're repairing all these robots using scrap from others, so... There is a limit. But I'm sure I can fix them all one day. We can't relax yet. We must work harder. Well, I believe in you. 
You're a good kid, Claire. <laughs> That's a great dream, but a difficult one to realize. I can get Serval. Uh, yeah, I can get Serval uh, to help us. She's an expert mechanic. Really? I can't wait. Oh. Uh, ah, I was talking so much that I totally lost track of time. That's okay. Let's head back. Otherwise, Mr. Sparag and Pascal will get worried. No, we wouldn't want that. Robot shell. Oh, it took us back. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mr. Sparog, we're back. Hello, Mr. Sparog. Clara is returned to you safe and sound. Welcome back. Return. Clara. Ribbit. Fail. You're. No, no failure. Welcome back, Clara. I've completed my further analysis of this robot. Yeah? What have you discovered? Conclusion. It is impossible to determine the time of manufacture, purpose, and ownership of this robot. Interesting. That's unusual, is it not? During my analysis, I extracted the robot's serial number and searched for it in the Underworld's automaton database. And it wasn't there? According to my search, there are 32 automatons with the oh. same serial number as this one. That's the problem. Even after eliminating the scrapped ones, three automatons still match the keyword description. Damn. Failure. Three. Back. Rivet one. Fail. You're... No, you're not a failure. Pascal saying, who's behind this plot? Is it possible to narrow down the search results further? Or what's what's Pascal trying to say? It appears so. I'm not sure what he's trying to say, though. Hmm. While we were talking, the robot's failure rate increased. We should activate alert mode. Tempering. Tempering. Back. Back. Back to Rivet. Fire. Fire. Rivet. Rivet Town? What's this about a fire, though? Pascal is becoming increasingly unstable. We should change his shell. Yeah, as soon as possible. Pascal, I'm going to change your shell. Don't worry, it won't hurt. Hmm, <laughs> can robots feel pain? Feels like it'd be mean to program into them. Town. Return. Waiting. Continue. Repair. Waiting. Failure. Waiting. I don't think this is the right shell. Still not functioning properly? What's wrong, Pascal? Watch out, Clara. Uh oh. Yeah, we did just give it a giant chainsaw. Failure. 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 Clara, behind me. Pascal? He's running away. Clara. Come on, Clara. Pascal. Okay, she said. Did safe. he run off towards Rivet Town? Let's follow him. No, Clara. Just leave it to me. Hmm. I'll order the robots to pursue this one. Oh, I love Dad Sparog being all concerned about her safety. No, Mr. Sparog. Please don't. Aw. It's so precious. Please leave Pascal to me. It was my decision to keep him in the first place, so I must take full responsibility. Aw. I... I'm certain Pascal won't do anything to harm anyone. But if something goes wrong... I can be there to protect you. Please let me handle this myself. Please, Mr. Sparog. Aw. Can you endure the thought of erasing his data yourself? shirk my responsibilities. I'll do it. Aw, you are strong, Clara. I'm certain Pascal would never do anything to harm anyone. <laughs> yeah. Clara, please tell me how you came to this conclusion. Good, uh, good question, Sparog. Pascal possesses a quality that other small robots lack. It's kind of similar to the emotions we humans have. Hmm. Sort of similar to how Sparog seems to have some semblance of emotions, too. 
despite, you know, underneath that cold, logical exterior. I've only ever seen this quality in Mr. Sparov. Yeah. A true intelligence. I feel... a warmth from these emotions. I feel drawn to this quality and try to respond back in my own way. Hmm. But I'm also aware that not all emotions in this world are positive. If there are too many negative emotions that go unchecked, then someone needs to step in and stop them. Very smart, Clara. The only things that can stop such negative emotions are rationality and responsibility. This is a valuable lesson I've learned from Mr. Sparov. Mr. Sparov, I want to help Pascal overcome those negative emotions. I want to take on this responsibility. Aww. Well, I'm sure you're up for the task. That way, I won't have to hide behind Mr. Sparag anymore. Aww. I understand, Clara. I support your decision. Hmm. You're a good dad, Sparag. I won't intervene unless the situation risks spinning out of control. Thank you, Mr. Sparag. So, let's go. Uh, yeah. Don't worry, Mr. Sparag. Sparag. Yeah. Sparag. I'll, uh... I'll keep a close eye on her. I will not let a single scratch come to her. Unacceptable on my part. Look, Pascal's over there. Oh yeah, there's a big Who's old standing next to it. Big old. Hmm? Oh, that's Isn't a grizzly. That a grizzly robot? Let's go take a look. Okay. Why are you kneeling before the grizzly? Pascal, who did this to you? Was it the grizzly? Pain, hurt, pain, hurt, pain, hurt, hurt, pain. Oh. Clara, get away. This is a fragmentum creature. It's extremely dangerous. Oh. Oh, is this uh, grizzly one of Svarog's robots then? But it knows this is a fragmentum creature? Huh. A fragmentum creature? What are you talking about? Yeah. It's clearly a robot, just like you. Have fragmentum creatures evolved to this level? How is that possible? Pascal is obviously a robot, just like you. Yeah. Could it have malfunctioned? It appears to be normal. Please step back. I shall eliminate this fragmentum creature. Please don't. You're gonna make Clara cry, and then I'll have to destroy you, and that'll make her cry more, and then I'll have to destroy myself. No, it's going to attack Pascal. We have to stop it. Shoot. Hostility detected. Commence elimination protocols. Oh well, oh, you no. can't be from it Mr. Seems to think we're its enemies as well. You can't be from Mr. Sfarog, uh, from Mr. Sfarog then. No robot under Mr. Sfarog's control would ever even think about I've got a hurting raid to Clara. Go to. Time for a bug. <laughs> you the doctor? It's not possible. A blade knows no mercy. The fight is set. That paradise may be safe for it for me. Best set are about to explode. Good. Explode on you instead. I will all fine. You. I failed to send you. I would like to heal her. Or heal him. I think we're about to destroy it. Yeah. Phew. Luckily, the patrol robot and Pascal's cores are still intact. Good. The big fella shell is only slightly dented. Thank you for your help. <laughs> You're welcome, Clara. The only thing that puzzles me is why the big fella mistook Pascal for a fragmentum creature. Yeah, that's really weird. I, I mean, it doesn't look anything like a fragmentum creature, but. Hmm. 
I can't figure it out. Well, let's not worry about that now. I'm a little worried about it, but... Anyway, I'll take this core back and examine it. Now, let's insert Pascal's core into the big fella's shell. Yeah, good idea. Insert Pascal's core into the scrap automaton grizzly. Language module. Connect. Connecting. <gasps> oh! It is a grizzly. Connection. Complete. Wow. Testing. Verifying. All modules. Working. Connected. Well, we way to go, Clara. We did it. Welcome back, everyone. Finally. Pascal has been waiting. How? Who? Who? What? And why are you, Pascal? Pascal, you're back to normal. Yeah. Happy ending. Should we should work out our rewards. I would never dare even think of asking for a reward from Clara. Helping Clara is its own reward. Asking about he was stealing parts. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Of course. Pascal, could you please uh Explain why you were stealing parts? If you remember. Collecting parts. Returning to workshop. Huh. What workshop? Workshop? Oh, do you mean the tempering workshop in Rivet Town? Tempering workshop? I'm not familiar. Then waiting. Repair. Follow, please. Pascal! <laughs> Despite the language module, you still speak in uh, broken sentences, but... It is more understandable. Uh, Pascal ran off. Let's follow him. He went in that direction. I think he wants us to follow him. Stay close, Clara. This could always still be dangerous. Uh oh, see. I think this place oh, used to be a restaurant. One time, I found a bunch of canned food here. <laughs> the mm. vagrants in the camp were so happy. No. You really are one of the best people on this planet. However, I've always wondered. Yeah? The light here. Why is it still on? Oh, yeah. This place has clearly been abandoned for a long time. No one bothered to turn it off? Though, you'd think it would run out of fuel or something. But... Also, there's dust all over the place. But none of the equipment appears to be deteriorating. Hmm. Maybe Rift Town is haunted. Is it possible someone lives here? I don't think so. No one should be living here. I never saw anyone when I came here to hunt for supplies. Maybe the moles? No. Anyway, someone must be looking after this place. But who? Hmm. And... Why? Very good questions, Clara. Oh, what are you? Oh, oh, that's just uh. <sighs> this is where you're taking us. Clara, welcome back, Rivet Town. Yeah, here we are in Rivet Town. Look, isn't it shiny? Hmm. Job, Pascal, done, nice. What's shiny? Huh? Could it be? Pascal has been repairing this abandoned huh. town? Interesting. I wonder why and by what directive? From whom? Pascal, repair, indeed. Waiting, Vin, everyone. Aw, Pascal. Why is this why you've been stealing stealing the parts? Parts, Pascal, collect, nonstop. Rivet town, repair, nonstop. Huh. Aww. It seems that Pascal was stealing parts because he wants to repair the town. Apparently so. Have you been waiting for us? Waiting. Everyone. Pascal. Non-stop. Leave. Everyone. Come back. One day. Can they come back, though? The Fragmentum is still here. That would be too dangerous. Even with the place repaired. 
Has Pascal been waiting for Rivettown's evacuated residents to return? I think so. Poor little guy or big guy. They're going to be waiting a long time. Have you been repairing this town? Repair? Been every day. Pascal, use, can, everyone return. Aww. Why don't we just take you to the other people? Pascal has been looking after the town so that everyone can go back to their previous lives when they return. That's sweet of you, Pascal. You remind me of a robot version of Clara. So, why did you bring us here? Workshop. Tempering. Here. Base. Pascal. Secret. Hmm. Parts. Store. Enemies. Not here. Place. Safe. Scared. No need, everybody. Hmm. Ah. This appears to be the secret base where Pascal keeps the parts. Yeah. Would Pascal be angry if we took parts? Although we now know why he took them, there are still many unanswered questions. For example... Yeah? Why does he want to repair the town? Why is Pascal being treated as a fragmentum creature? All of the above, really. Why does he want to repair the town? Yeah, why is Pascal being treated as a fragmentum creature? Right. That bigger robot said that. How strange. It really is. Hmm. I wonder if we can find any clues here. Worth a shot. Rivertown, live, Clara. Tour, feel free, please. Of course, thank you, Pascal. Just, you know, be kind. Book pages and letters all carefully cut and put aside, whose content varies from tales for children to outdated political news. These pages are so neatly cut out. Oh, and they smell like Geomero fuel. Hmm. What's the content? Is there someone here in Rivet Town doing this? Or could Pascal have collected the pages and put them together? Well, I mean, my guess would be the latter, but... Interesting. I mean, someone has to have been giving Pascal orders, right? Probe, uh, the uh, radio. A well-maintained CRT display. Well, no, this isn't. That is. This looks more like a radio. Though covered by some dust, it still functions. This must be the result of Pascal's meticulous repairs. But the little fella doesn't really need the monitor, does he? I don't know. I don't see anything on the CRT up there, but... Hmm. CRT TV. Hey! Those look like handprints on the side of the cabinet. Human handprints. Where? Could this monitor have been recently used by someone? Maybe there is someone else here. Huh. Interesting. A book, a journal, a diary? Huh? What's this? A diary? Wow. Such neat handwriting. Huh. No, wait a minute. I think this was printed onto the cover. Okay, yeah. Uh, too good to be neat handwriting, in other words. Could it be Pascal's? Pascal, have you been keeping a diary? Huh. The page displays a neatly printed uh, typeface. Not handwritten. It appears to have been bound in later. Something 367. It's all the, from the same year. Yeah. So it looks like different months, unknown days. Airframe damage log backup failure. Manual record log. Daily rescue progress, 25%. Estimated time of completion, two days. Discovered number of survivors, null. Rittown guard automaton online count, one. Determined as current unit. Hmm. I guess Pascal was a Rittown guard automaton? Daily rec rescue progress 75%. Estimated time of completion one day. I guess these could be actually month day rather than day month. Um, actually, yeah, based off the lengths of these, I'm guessing that's actually the case. 
So it's one day later, which makes sense with the estimated time of completion. Uh, discovered survivors and null. One online guard and okay. And then zero days to completion. Rest, daily rescue progress 100%. Summary. Discovered numbers, uh, number of survivors, null. Possible reason, retreated. Accurate. Still one online. Possible reason for online status. Backup power activated. Decision patrol continue. Uh, continue town re uh, reparation. Anticipate return of residents. Hmm. Oh, part two. Oh, this was a year later. Looks like handwriting on this page cannot be said to be neat, showing how out of practice the writer is. Is it not printed anymore? Some pages in the middle have seemed to have fallen out. Daily reparation parts collection mission complete. Free time. Reading books left behind by others. I think books are fun. Art. Is this like a um? Is this AI developing further? Like a personality is going um um. What's, what's the term in Halo? Rampancy, something like that. Interesting. Daily reparation complete. Reconnected light circuitry. Light stayed on, or light stays on. Feeling safe. Found fairy lights in ruins. Oh, hey. Hung on wall mansion hilltop. Colorful. Very pretty. You're the one who did that. Huh. Finished reading last book. Seems to be called Fairy Tale. Puppy waiting, dead master home. A little sad. Aw. It's just like Pascal. And that's one of the saddest kinds of stories for me. Oh, that reminds me of a certain episode of Futurama that absolutely makes me cry. Um, daily reparation, do, 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 attacked by others like me. Hurt, escape tempering workshop. Workshop safe wall roof, my home relieved. Hmm, wonder why they attacked you now. They don't recognize you as a robot anymore. Today saw broken glass me weathered. Fixed before everyone return. Beautiful again. Loved. Fairy lights. Broken. Other places search. Attacked others like me again. Explain no. Call me fragmentum creature, not machine. Why? Is the fragmentum somehow altering you to help your AI evolve? Huh. It's actually fascinating. The words on this page seem a little erratic. Some pages in the middle seem to have fallen out. Another year later. Multiple days skipped here. Looks like multiple months even. Daily parts collection complete. Attacked by others like me again. Almost dead. Hurt. I am I not machine. Don't understand. What am I? Or confuse. Aw, poor Pascal. An <laughs> identity crisis for what was a robot. Hacks from others like me frequent. What am I? For noise generation. Reparation parts need collect. And now is when the language starts failing. Date. Parts collection. Poor noise generation unceasing. What am I? Am I? Don't understand. I what? Require parts collection repair. I... Collect. Collect parts. Parts. Noi. Core noise. E. Co-lean. Parts. Repair me. What am I? Am I? What is am? What I? I am what? What I? Poor. Poor. Poor little guy. 
Collect. Collect parts. Hurts. Collect. Collect parts. Hurts. Collect. Collecting parts. Repair. I repair. Collect. Repair. Collect. Repair me. Repair. Noise. Parrots. Er, repair. Collect. Collect. Parts. Collect. Collect. Parts. Collecting parts. Oh, man. Parts. Collect. 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 Strap. Collect. Collect. Repair. Air. I. No parts. No arts. Collect. Eight. Six. Nine. Eight. Parts. Collect. Repair. Core. Or repair. Or six. Nine. Parts. Collection. Dump. Hmm. Yeah. Gibberish record records fill the rest of the document. There's no longer any need to continue reading. Poor Pascal. Aww. Yeah. Pascal. I feel so bad for it. It all makes sense now. So that's what happened. Let me think. Hmm. How about we go over Pascal's whole story again, from the start? That would probably be useful. Try to sort out the whole story. His backup power was activated after the incident in Rivetown. Yes, and I woke up to discover that Rivetown had been abandoned. Right, then it decided to uh, prepare it for the return of people. Decided to collect parts, repair the town, and wait for everyone to return. And that's when he started developing a personality. Around that time, Pascal became sentient. Reca you uh, recapitulate your thoughts to Clara. That is correct. Right. So, Pascal used to be a robot guardian of Rivet Town. Yeah. Pascal's backup power was activated for some reason shortly after the residents were evacuated. Correct. It woke up to discover that the whole place had been abandoned. So, it decided to collect parts, repair the town, and wait for everyone to return. Right. However, for some reason, Pascal keeps getting attacked by his fellow robots because the automatons think he's a fragmentum creature. Which, whether the fragmentum is responsible for his developed sentience or not, I don't think he's a fragmentum creature. Maybe Pascal has gained sentience? I'm not sure, but I suspect Pascal's tormented sense of self stems from him being constantly attacked by his fellow robots. Oh yeah. It's kind of cruel. The module used to detect emotions was frequently damaged, eventually turning him into a small robot that did nothing but collect parts. Right. That's probably what happened. Why is Pascal being treated as a fragmental creature, though? I don't know. I can't find the answer in Pascal's diary. Pascal, why do your peers keep rejecting you? Big sister, Clara, Tour, enjoyable, is it? Very enjoyable, Pascal. Pascal, collect parts, ready, continue. Or, wait, instruction, next. Um. Pascal's consciousness does not appear to have returned to the level shown in the diary. No, does not. Though... Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Was it that level of sentience in a robot body that wasn't made for it? That caused the mind to basically break? Or is that just because of the continued attacks? I lean towards the latter, but... Big sister! Clara! Rivet Town! Resident! No, I can't live here though, Pascal. Pascal! Protect everybody! Aww. I see. Thank you so much, Pascal. Yeah. Can we, uh, move you somewhere new? You can stop gathering parts for the time being. Just stay here and wait for us to return and give you your next orders, alright? Pascal affirmative. Be good. Wait. Aww. God, Pascal's adorable. Let's go back to Mr. Sparrow and talk about what to do next. Good idea, Clara. It'll help, you know. Sparrow will be able to sort this out a little better. Probably. 
good, good giant robot, Pascal. Well, Mr. Sparrow, has Clara informed you of the situation? So, that's what happened, Mr. Sparrow. But there's one thing I don't understand. Why is Pascal being treated as a fragmentum creature? Right. Most important question. This robot has been repairing itself using fragmentum contaminated components oh. for an extended period of time. That makes Therefore, sense. Automatons connected to the base network recognize it as a fragmentum creature. This is a minor issue that can be resolved by replacing components. Do not worry. Fantastic. Oh, that's good. This is excellent news. I see. Has Mr. Sparag ever witnessed a similar incident anywhere in the network? No. Network connected automatons regularly clear out muddled information in their core modules. This is why in the world of Star Wars, you always wipe robots met well. Not regularly wipe robots memories. The likelihood of a robot gaining sentience beyond control is approximately 0.12%. For those that aren't connected to the network, the chance climbs to 3.23%. Hmm. Well, that's far from impossible, so... Please keep in mind that these probabilities are only estimates. Over the past 700 years, this has never happened in the underworld. Right. So you don't know what to do either? The robots here do appear to be quite intelligent. To make life easier for users, all of Bellabog's automatons contain language simulation abilities. Right. They generate appropriate responses by reading preset parameters and mimicking natural human conversations. They are artificial intelligences designed to replicate real human speech, unlike Mr. Svarog, who is very clearly a true intelligence general intelligence this however is only a simulation and it does not mean that the automatons have actual emotional intelligence but mr. Sparog is different yeah definitely given that automatons can still develop emotion modules using their own processing power I have a backup plan in place yeah mr. Sparog always takes all factors into <laughs> account and handles problems logically yes he does I can't do that myself yet <laughs> yeah, oh, he's a clarite. You don't have to compare yourself to a literal supercomputer. <laughs> That's uh, not a reasonable expectation for yourself. So, what should we do with Pascal? It is recommended that Pascal's data be formatted and integrated into the base network. So, same story as before then. I will maintain the robot's core module and repair its hardware once it has been integrated into the base network. Very good. There is a greater than 97.2% chance that this robot will return to normal after the bad sectors and muddled information are removed. However... Wouldn't, won't that remove what makes Pascal Pascal, though? What about Pascal's emotional intelligence? Once the formatting is complete, the robot's emotional intelligence will vanish. Aww. <sighs> I don't know if that's a better choice or not. I guess we could leave it up to Pascal. Is there no other option? This option minimizes both internal and external losses. Although Clara's account indicates that the robot is relatively stable, the assessment based on the computations shows that. What? Both the risk of Pascal crashing and the amount of muddled information are increasing Ooh. when it approaches 100%. Right. I understand, but I don't think I'm ready to give up on Pascal just yet. No? We've helped Pascal find compatible hardware. If we can eliminate the muddled information without damaging the sectors linked to his emotional intelligence... Hmm. I can say I'm definitely not qualified to do that, but maybe you or Mr. Sparrow can do it. You know the chances of that are incredibly low, Clara. Hmm. Sprague's calculations are extremely precise. How do you generally get rid of muddled information? There's only one way to completely remove muddled information. Overwriting. Hmm. When the muddled information is removed, the base network will create a comprehensive backup and overwrite the data stored in the corresponding sector. What, though? <sighs> Maybe there's another way. 
What are you thinking, Clara? We can install a lock in Pascal's core. A lock? What kind of lock? What do you mean? Clear the redundant data and locate the core sectors that are still intact. Then we can install a, a new suite of operational programs. Oh? This suite of programs can regulate Pascal's behavior and prevent him from hurting people. Interesting idea while maintaining who Pascal is. With this method, we might be able to retain as much of Pascal's emotional intelligence as possible while keeping him out of trouble. Will he still degrade and go crazy, though? If we can keep Pascal's emotional intelligence, I might be able to teach him to treat people with kindness. What do you think, Mr. Sparrow? I mean, you managed to, treat, to teach Mr. Sparrow to sort of treat people with kindness. So, if anyone can do it, I believe in you, Clara. This procedure is theoretically viable, but there are risks. It will not eliminate the muddled information. Additionally, the newly installed programs may be later contaminated by it. Hmm. In other words, because we cannot monitor the robot outside of the network, this approach can only guarantee Pascal's stability for a brief period of time. Hmm. How brief are we talking? The probability of the robot crashing again is around. And if that happens, I'll do it again. Aww. And if it happens again, I'll go through the exact same steps. Aw, Clara. I'll guide him and fix him. No matter how many times it happens, I'll be there to help Pascal. Oh, Clara. <laughs> but he will forget about you, Clara. He will repeatedly forget you, as well as all the emotions and memories he has previously accumulated. Oh, that's actually really sad. His limited storage capacity will eventually become completely overwritten by infinite copies of muddled information in an everlasting cycle. Man, is, that is actually extremely tragic. Oh, damn. Clara, the challenge will be tougher than you can possibly imagine. Are you sure this is the path you want to take? Oh, man. Clara. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. There, there, Clara. There's no need to rush to a conclusion. Yeah. The variable in Bellabog's fate is still here. Perhaps she can suggest what? the best solution. No. No, I can't. I don't know anything about this. Okay. I... I trust your judgment. No, don't trust my judgment. I don't know anything. We trust your decision. I know nothing. Both have provided their solutions. Svarog thinks that formatting Pascal's data and integrating him into the base's network is necessary. But doing so will deprive Pascal of his special emotional intelligence. Right. Although it may sound cruel, this approach best prevents Pascal from posing a threat. But it basically... I, the closest analogy I can think of is it's basically giving him a... Uh, um, basically giving him a lobotomy. Clara thinks she can use programming to control Pascal's behavior and prevent him from causing harm while keeping his emotional intelligence intact. However, this doesn't address the root of the issue, and it also requires Clara to devote much time and effort to Pascal. Hmm. Although Clara will use Pascal's emotional intelligence to help guide him in the right direction, Pascal could still go out of control in the future. Oof. In addition, Pascal has a history of stealing, even though he never caused any harm to anyone. This is also a major concern. Right. What is most important here? I need to think carefully and choose one solution, and then persuade the other person. Hmm. I don't know. Clara proposed that you should choose outsider. I respect her wish. I know, and that's why I love you, Sparog. Have you made a decision about how to handle Pascal? Um, I'd like to moment. I understand. 
You can make a decision after you've thought about it more. This is actually really tough. I don't know. I, uh... Is there any chance at all of... Claire's approach working? Like, if it's just an endless cycle, then it might be better to uh, make the hard call now. But if there's a chance of success, then I can side with Claire on this and say it's worth the effort to try to save this unique being. Uh, yeah? What should we do with Pascal? Okay. I'll think about it some more, too. Hmm. Uh, I... Ah. It would... It, it's a bit too much for me to suggest we basically destroy this sentient being. Yeah. So, are, so are, can I decided? convince you? My choice will have a direct impact on the outcome. I should mull it over. I have. We'll go with Clara's idea. Pascal, we're back. Hi, Pascal. Pascal, good. Waiting. Waiting. Further instructions now please be a good boy and don't move mm -hmm. pascal we've got mr spark to help treat your illness he'll help you recover illness what is illness it's a uh, sort of an illness of the mind pascal but pascal not move recover health yeah Mr. Sparog, let's get started. It's gonna be so hard on her, though, having Pascal forget her over and over again. Understood. The protective programs are ready for installation. I hope, no matter what, this is probably gonna. No, really, truly right answer here, I think. I hope I made the right decision. I hope so, too, Clara. Is it done? The programs were successfully installed. The robot will require offline maintenance and will be unable to communicate for some time. We can return to it later. I see. In that case, let's go back to the base. Can we take Pascal with us or? I think it's over. I'll check in with Clara later to see what's up. Oh, oh wow, this is actually a three part. Clara! Maybe. Might just be two part. Clara has become a visitor of the Express. Yay! You might come across her when you return. Clara and the Sun. Okay, no, yeah, I think this is the only. This is a two parter. Maybe it'll eventually become a three parter, but I don't think it is so far. Hmm. Pascal, I hope you managed to succeed overcoming your issues for both yours and Clara's sake. Oh, Clara. I was just actually going to see you. I want to go on a picnic. Go to a picnic with everyone. Oh, big sister. Are you free now? I want to talk about Pascal. Oh, are you still sad? No, I've calmed down. Actually, I've thought about it a lot. A lot about it. I just don't understand. What is Pascal? Other robots think Pascal is a fragmentum creature. Creation. Mr. Svarog thinks Pascal is a normal robot. Pascal doesn't even know what it is itself. I think Pascal could even be a human. Big sister, what do you think? I lean towards it's a robot that has developed sentience due to uh, the fragmentum, maybe. It's a robot. Unless... Well, depending on how we define human, if by human we need sentience, then I'll go with that. I think it is, I think it is just as human as Mr. Svarog. Living human being. You think so, big sister? I think so too, but... 
fragmentum creation creature robot human what is the difference between these some fragmentum creatures can speak and behave like humans while mr sfarag looks like a robot he can speak think and even express emotions like us so how do we tell what is us and what is them hmm through empathy is no difference there are differences but uh let's go through empathy only humans have the ability to identify and empathize with other types of creatures well in this case i'm not sure if that's true in this universe or not but so that's how it is so maybe pascal and mistress farog maybe they're all living breathing humans too well maybe not breathing but i don't feel so lost anymore Thank you, big sister. Oh, Clara. <laughs> Just wanted to verify. We can talk to you after all. Bio heat reaction detected. Identifying bio information. Identification result. Outsider Stell. Hostility level none. Welcome to the robot sentiment settlement Stell. Oh, hey, Mr. Svarog. Is, Pas is Pascal still acting weird lately? According to calculations, under the effects of the protection program, the probability of this machine's abnormal activity has been reduced to approximately 2.1%. Well, that's good. Is it holding stable, or are your calculations changing over time? However, this metric will inevitably increase again with the passage of time. Due to the inability to effectively monitor the machines outside the base network, I must regularly perform risk assessment according to Clara's maintenance results, so as to facilitate timely intervention at suitable moments. Yeah, this is the harder option. That's fair. Does that mean the protective program isn't effective? Inconclusive. The protection program cannot remove constantly generated information noises. Also, the newly installed program runs the risk of being contaminated by stated by the stated noises. Once the noise reaches a threshold value, this machine will be unable to avoid malfunction. When that time comes, you all must make the identical decision. Hmm. But, but, Clara has already decided. I will accompany her and seek a breakthrough in this endless cycle does not involve complete reformatting. <laughs> I believe in you, Sfarog. I believe you can find a solution. Will Clara be able to handle it? That's the important, real important question. I have performed repeated calculations regarding this problem, of which the results lie outside the area of the confidence bracket. I cannot convey irregular calculated results to you, but I will keep verifying my formula and calculations until I obtain an approximate answer. I understand. Regardless, your choice has respected Clara's resolve and determination. I, and on behalf of Clara, convey our gratitude, Stell. Oh, thank you, Sparog. I, I, yeah, trampling on her determination as well as effectively killing an intelligent being is... I, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. Welcome to our settlement, Outsider. Hey, you talked. I wish to talk to Svarog. Approved. Please submit your question, Outsider. Oh. What sort of settle place is the robot settlement? The robot settlement. With the spread of the fragmentum, vagrants made camp around the manned well shaft and soon formed a small gathering. Atop the well shaft is Bellabog's greenhouse effect device. Harnessing high volumes of Geomero as an energy source, it maintains constant temperatures between Bellabog's surface and the underground, and is now a property of Bellabog Heating Corporation. That sounds important. At the bottom of the well shaft is the old Geomero Development Group's science expedition base, the Furnace Core. It has since been abandoned. It's the greenhouse effect device. I mean, I can guess what it does from the name, but... Correct. The device has a more symbolic than practical application. Really? Not critical for food may, uh, production? According to observational results, counter-radiation of this device's long-wave radiation 
only accounts for approximately 5.2% of the former. Presently, I am unable to ascertain the true factor for Bellabog's temperature consistency. Huh. Tentative hypothetical result. Disruption from another plane. What, like the Fragmentum? Geomero Development Group Science Base? Geomero Development Group was established during the governance of the Supreme Guardian, Sage Alexandra. The Guardian sponsored and founded the Bellabog Academy, and later performed underground trailblazing research. Science Expedition Base, the Furnace Core, was built by the Geomero Development Group's first head, Area Ayrna Sakonasum. After which, under instructions from the fourth head, Lenova, it was shut down. I understand. Well, thank you. I will try my best to provide the knowledge you require. <laughs> Always an interesting question. What is the relationship between Sfarog and Clara? Family. <laughs> yeah. Good answer. Processing the outsider's inquiry. Alright, I got it. Recalculating. Result result identical to previous 55 calculated results. Existing data will temporarily not be altered. You are family. Understood. That is the correct answer. <laughs> I think I've actually heard him do that, those answers before. Ah, it's the outsider, Miss Stell. Welcome to the robot settlement. Oh, call me the outsider, Miss uh, Cl Clara. I'm Big Sistel. This place isn't as bustling as a mining town, but we're still co quite confident how we live with how we live. The older folk at the camp, the little robots, they all like it here. If you're interested, miss, you're welcome to see the sights here, too. Aw, I want to talk to you, Clara. Oh, of course, miss. What do you, what do, what do you wish to talk about? What sort of place is the robot settlement? It's... It's used, it used to be a manned well shaft for Mr. Sfarag. If the cable car line wasn't open, this would be the only way to the surface around here. Yeah, I remember that. The Fragmentum disaster caused many to lose their homes. In the beginning, some would come here in hopes of receiving Mr. Sfarag's protection. And so, Clara got together with Mr. Sfarag to provide supplies to refugees. Do you talk about yourself in the third person? They also let them... Oh, yeah, you are talking about yourself in the third person. They also let them stay around the well shaft. This way, Mr. Sfarg could help everyone fend off the Fragmentum's uh, monsters. Unless they is referring to Mr. Sfarg. Not you as well. Slowly but surely, many heard about how Mr. Sfarg could protect people and came here to make camp. And that's how the robot settlement developed into such a bastion. Why is it called the Robot Settlement? Presumably because it's where Mr. Sfarg was settled. Ah, uh, I forgot to mention this. Actually, it's because this place used to be where Mr. Sfarg and the little robots of his work robot network were stationed. Right, makes sense. Most of the vagrants who make camp here like these robots. As time went by, they also learned some mechanical skills. Everyone was so kind. Humans and robots living in harmony here. And that's why everyone called this place the Robot Settlement. Hmm. Everyone depends on Clara and Sfarg's salvation, then. Um, that's not true. The people who live here all have their own skills, like mechanical maintenance and such. Everyone should be able to live their lives by relying on themselves, but the underworld is sorely lacking in supplies now. And so, to prevent everyone from starving or falling ill, Clara and Mr. Sfarg must always have supplies handy. Right. Thank you, Clara. <laughs> All in a day's work. And what do you think your relationship is with Mr. Sfarog? Well, if I had to say, more like family? Mm, good answer. I've never met my own parents. Aw. As long as I can remember, Mr. Sfarog's always been by my side. You too. I love you too. No matter what we faced, Mr. Sfarog would always put my well-being first. He also taught me all sorts of things, and how to live with others. I think 
Mr. Svog is like what people call a father. <laughs> he is. Best robot dad. So, Mr. Svog and I are family. I think that's the right word. Yes, it is, Clara. Yes, it is. Well, I hope you, Mr. Svog, and, well, everyone else, Pascal especially, are well uh, from now until forever. I hope to see you in the Express someday, too. And we can hang out with Hook, even. Oh, okay. There she is. Yes. The Express is flying. The Express really does fly up in the sky. <laughs> yes, it does, Clara. Can we, can we please get you some shoes? I feel so bad about you walking around in the snow barefoot. I can't be good. We must be really high up here, right? Much higher than Mr. Sparrow's shoulders. <laughs> much, much higher, Clara. As high as you can go. I feel like I'm dreaming. Aw, pretty awesome, right? <laughs> it's just like a movie. Mm, yeah. Uh, actually, I've never seen a movie with views like this before. Well, I'm glad I could show it to you, Clara. Next time, I'll have to convince Mr. <gasps> Sparrow to come along. Yeah, that's a great idea. Seems like you like the Express very much. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me along. You are more than welcome. And always welcome back. Hmm, I can't wait to get your character.